Hey guys, Kakarot1970 again. This time with a review of the 144 scale high grade Cyclazus Schwalbe Custom provided to me by my favorite online hobby store, Hobbling Japan. Links to buy your own down below. And the first thing that I noticed about this machine was that for some reason it's no longer called a Schwalbe Graze, but just a Schwalbe. The second thing then is of course the pair of handguns with bayonets, but more on those in a second. First we're gonna have a close look at the Schwalbe, and there's really gonna be no surprise here if you've built any greys in the past. Thanks to the relatively simple color scheme, almost everything is molded correctly, with the few exceptions being covered by stickers. Although, due to remold syndrome, this one does have a few more. There's the usual yellow sticker for the chest and the back, four stickers for the thrusters on the shoulders, a sticker for the hidden main sensor, two shiny golden stickers for the visor, and the very light bluish gray sticker for the horns, and the stripes on the right shoulder and the shield. And for the seam lines, it's basically the same story. For the most part, everything is fine, but you can still spot a few. So overall, you're getting an extremely nice looking Schwalbe straight out of the box that also looks very distinct thanks to that fantastic burgundy color scheme, the accessories and those horns. The inner frame though remains the same, both in universe and in model kit form, so you're still getting a full but flimsy inner frame. On to the accessories then, and as I just said, the main ones are the twin 130mm short barrel handguns, which, for being called short barreled, do have quite a long barrel when compared to the body of the gun, especially when the design makes it very obvious that these things are styled to be like revolvers and probably function like them too. Attaching them to the hands then is very similar to the standard Grey's rifle. Slide them into the hands and then secure them with this little piece that also clicks into the arm. And for defensive purposes, we have this little buckler shield that attaches to the left arm and can also rotate around. And because this is a remold of the standard Schwalbe Grey's, it of course also comes with standard Grey's weapons. The battle axe, which can also be stored on one of the side skirts, and the 120mm rifle. And with the other leftover parts, you can almost build a regular Schwalbe Grey's, but not quite. You've got the normal shoulders, head, wrists, including the claw thing that can shoot out, and the hips with the thrusters. The only thing missing is the thruster for the standard back skirt. Like I said, almost, but not quite. Then you've also got feet in a different color and this leftover piece from the standard grays, which was also a leftover with the Schwalbe grays, which then makes this a leftover, leftover part. And with that, it is time to have a look at the articulation of this thing. And as with everything else, there's really no surprises here. The head is on a double ball joint, the shoulders connect to the body with a hinge and has its own hinge and ball joint combo for the arm, the shoulder armor goes up and so does the arm, it rotates round, bends at the elbow on one joint and the hand is on a ball joint. For the waist then we get the usual hinge joint on the top and the ball joint at the bottom and if you move it too much it'll pop out, which then makes it easier to show you the articulation of the side skirts. On the back then, the thruster units are on ball joints with movable thrusters, and the one on the back skirt is on a hinge joint, also with a movable thruster. However, what does not translate well on camera is how much I'm trying to handle it in a way so that the entire back skirt doesn't fall off. The legs then only go forwards that much due to the unarticulated front skirts, which is absolutely not the case for the back skirts or the side skirts. They'll also rotate round, bend at the knee on two joints, the ankle armor is on a ball joint, and the feet also have some really good articulation thanks to the swivel and ball joint combo. So yeah, like I said with the inner frame, flimsy is a very good word to describe this model. It might be very poseable, but that doesn't mean it's not a pain to do sometimes. So as always, the inevitable question is, do you want to buy this? 
And well, it's really going to boil down to how you like the accessories and the looks. Because functionally speaking, it is somewhat inferior to its fellow Grey's brethren. Combine that with the higher price for not that much more, and you might want to look in some of the alternate options that are available. But on the flip side, those twin revolvers with bayonets and the awesome color scheme do make a very good argument in favor of this machine. Or in other words, I bought it for the revolvers and so should you. So for some size comparisons, here we have it next to the Grace Custom and McGillis's Schwalbe Grays. Two cheaper alternatives, depending on availability of course. Next up then, here it is next to the Barps and the Rebaked Cushion. And finally, here it is next to the standard sized Gym Custom and the always bulky Zaku 3. And that has been all for this review of this not Grays that was provided to me by Hobbling Japan. Again, links down below. As always, a big thank you to the Patreon supporters, I hope everyone watching has a great day, and I'll see you all next time.